Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, you'll have to excuse me a bit. I have a bit of a sinus infection, so everything is kind of strained from here on up. And uh, that includes the active brain cells that are usually functioning within this noggin. So things might go kind of quirky here, but anyways, let me just give this the best shot I can. So a question I'm asked, I was asked this question many times through the year 2019, 2020, by many people who are in the roofing business or home inspection business. They say, you know what? When I send the guys up on the roof, it's kind of scary. Insurance problems, they fall off. So it might be easier in a lot of cases to go check out the roof with a drone and see how things are before I send any guys up. Or maybe I'm in the home inspection business and I just want to take a look at the top of the house to make sure everything is okay, as well as the ease troughs and you know the gutters and just make sure things are good. Can you recommend the drone? So in every case, I recommend at least two or three drones and uh, people are usually quite happy with the recommendations. Now, myself being in the drone hobby for many, many years, maybe too many years, uh, I have flown over many people's houses because they all ask me, Steve, you have a drone. Can, can you come over and check out my roof? I'm, I have a leak or something. So I always use the same drones. I've used many drones that are on the market, but uh, some of them are a little scary. So I've come down to like all of these drones down to a very, very tiny list of only four. Four drones that I believe are the best for inspecting a roof. Doesn't matter what business you're in, these are the best. So uh, I'm gonna show you the four right now and then come back to me and I'll tell you the pluses and minuses of each of those drones and then you can make an informed decision. Here we go. All right, first drone up is the DJI Mini 2. Here we go, let's go fly this baby. Open up the case. All right, our little mini's down there. Let's take it up. Nice and smooth, nice and quiet too, look at that. All right, there she goes. All right, so the Mini's really stable. It's getting good satellites. It's got good positioning. No issues whatsoever. So let's take it up to look at the roof. Now the Mini, I've set it so that the camera can look above horizon. So let me lift up the camera now and you'll see what I mean. So I'll bring the camera up, if you see, and you can see I can sort of look up a little bit. So let's bring it closer to the house. There's no obstacle avoidance. And uh, let's take it up. We're gonna go inspect the underside of the roof. In other words, the eaves trough right there. Should be able to see it. There we go. And we can move to the right, looking at it. Move to the left. That's my chimney over there. There we go, and I can bring it up. And take a look at the roof as I go up. There's the gutters. Can take a look inside my gutters. So the Mini does a pretty good job. Hey, my gutters look pretty clean. Now watch this, I can press the function key and zoom in at the same time. There we go. So now I'll keep it zoomed in and I'll move it to the left and take a look at my gutters as I go. A little dent there, but that's pretty good. All right, so let's take the zoom out. Lift up the camera forward. and check out the roof. So this is the DJI Mini, the least expensive of all the drones I would recommend for roof inspection. Remember, there's no obstacle avoided, so if anything's in your way, you are going to smash into it. So if I fly at this, I could literally hit it and the Mini would not stop. Everything looks good there. I can take it up a bit more. Look down, and there we go, there's my roof. And if I saw any of the roof I wanted to inspect, I could always just zoom in, just hit the zoom button. There we go, zoom into the tiles, move forward. There we are, everything looks good. There we go, all right, and then take it back up. Looking down at my tiny little roof, there we go. There's our roof inspection, pretty cool, eh? All right, so let's bring that down and try another drone. There I am. Bring her on down. And like all minis, you could just catch them. There we go. All right, mini, you did well. All right, next drone would be the Parrot Anafi. So we're going to go check this out. Let's uh, see how it flies back here. Not a lot of satellites, but we'll see how it works. 
All right, so in my case here, I have the Anafi. There it is back there. All right, so I have the Parrot Anafi down here, and it has to capture the GPS signal from over here, all over the place, and we'll see how good it is. Let's go up, take off. And let's see what it says on my screen. Weak GPS signal. All right, no problem. Let's take it up, it's nice and quiet. All right, let's take it over to the house. There we go. Now let's make the camera look up. Going up, 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 up. We can look at the eaves troughs again. This one here can look 90 degrees up, so I can almost look, uh, well, I can pretty much look straight up as I come up. Okay, and on that, let's uh, fly upwards at the same time. Look at that. Now there is no obstacle avoidance on here, so as I go up, I have to make sure I don't hit anything. Let's bring the camera down. There we go. There we go. We can look right at them. Now you'll notice one thing. The Anafi is a little less stable in the air than the DJI Mini 2. But I do have a zoom on it and a better zoom. Watch this. I'm going to zoom in. Going in, going in, going in. Nice big super zoom. Look at that. Ho -ho! That's pretty decent. All right, let's take that out. And just like last time, let's bring up our camera. And let's go look at the roof. That's in front of us right here. All right, so we have these little things. Now, obviously, no obstacle avoidance again, so I will just crash into the roof, so I have to be very careful here. Fly up a little bit and look down. There we go. But if you wanted to inspect anything, you could just zoom right in. Check all that out. How's that for waterproofing? Looks okay. Looks okay. That's all good. Look over there. Looks good. So the Anafi is pretty darn decent. Let's pull out the zoom. And let's do one of those down looking shots as we go up. There we go. And just to show you that zoom again, here we go. Zoom one more time. Zoom all the way in. There we are. And zoom all the way back out. And then spin it around. Come and find me. Take it nice and slow. There we are, coming down. All right, all right, so there's the Anafi. Let's go try another drone. All right, our next drone is the DJI Mavic Air 2. Really good drone. It has obstacle avoidance, which might be a problem. Uh, I believe it does have a zoom function, and I'm not sure if it has a ability to look above horizon, but I think it does. So let's go try it out. There we go, the Mavic Air 2. Let's pull it out and get it going. All right, so once again, it has to grab satellites through the trees, past this building, through my building. There's not much sky here, but these drones are really pro. They can do it well. So let's see how well it flies. Going up. Not bad. Not too noisy. All right, so take it forward. I have obstacle avoidance on, so it should not crash into my house. There we go. And uh, let's go on up. So let me see if I can move the camera looking up. Here we go. Yeah, it goes above horizon. Take a look at the eaves troughs. And there we go. So I can, just like all the other drones, move a little bit to the left or to the right. This only has obstacle avoidance front and rear. So if I went to the right and crashed into something, well then bad on me. All right, so let's go up. So far the obstacle avoidance is not giving me a hard time. Let's take it up. And let's look down at our gutters. Flies much faster than the other ones. There we go. Let's go over top of them and look right in. So this has a zoom function. Here we go. And there we go. I can zoom in and back off a little bit. There we are. And then, of course, move to the left. Looking down. Looks good. And zoom back out. There we go. Now I can look up at the roof. Just like the other drones, let's go check out something. Check all that out with the zoom. Looks pretty darn good. Look down. 
There we are. Check that out. Everything's looking good there. Ooh, a little bit of a ripple at the back area, but uh, not too bad. Let's zoom back out. And we'll take it up and look down. Go way up. There we are. There we go. Try the zoom. And there's our zoom in. Not bad. And then zoom back out. Spin it around and bring it down to me. Comes down so fast, you gotta be careful. And just like the other ones, if you wanna land it in your hand, you can land it in your hand. There we are. All right, let's go try out the last one. All right, the next drone is the Skydio 2. It has always on obstacle avoidance, so it should be pretty interesting flying around objects because it's not gonna wanna get near them. So I'm gonna see how it flies, but it should be the safest of all the drones because it's 360 obstacle avoidance. It cannot hit anything. So let's try it out. All right, here we have our Skydio 2. Let's get it set up and ready for a flight. Ready to go. You cannot stand near the Skydio or else it will not take off. It has to have a clearing around it because it has the obstacle avoidance on all the time. So uh, you can also launch it from your hand if you want. So here we go. I'm going to hold down the takeoff and it will take off. It's a little noisier than the other ones. There we go. All right, let's take it towards the house. Now it sees the house in front, so I have to try to keep it stable there. And I want to see if I can get the camera to look upwards. Let's see, up, 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 up. Uh, oh, it can go up, look at that. There we go. Camera goes way up, awesome. Let's take it up. And bring the camera down. And let's look at our gutters. I don't have a zoom on this. Oh, it thinks it wants to land there. I don't want it to land on my roof. Let's go back here. There we go. When you see that picture, that's like, that shows it where it's gonna land. All right, Larry's looking at the gutters. And let's look forward. Take it up a bit and move it over the roof. There we go, we can see stuff. It can't crash into any of that. It will go around it. If I try to move it forward, it just goes around it. There we go. Like I'm not moving it that way. It's doing it. It's doing all that. Bring the camera around. There you go. Can look at all that stuff nice and close. Go forward. And there we go. Pretty cool, eh? All right, since this one doesn't have a zoom, I won't fly up to go over top of the roof and look down. It's not the same. So here we go. Let's bring it down. And just like all the other ones, you can land it in your hand if you want. And there we go. All right, I'm back. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through each of the four drones you saw and tell you the pluses and minuses of each drone so that you can decide for the business you're in if you need a drone for your business to inspect something high up in the air what would be the best drone for you? Let me tell you the considerations you should consider that are pluses and minuses. So uh, this is the first drone you just saw. It is the DJI Mini 2. And over here, I'm gonna put the pluses and minuses. So the very first plus we're gonna look at is the weight on this baby, because it is the least heavy of all the drones and in a good category. So let me put it down on my scale. Let's make sure it's still on. Hopefully you can see that. So my scale is saying 240 grams. 250 grams is the limit in most countries around the world for a drone. If you are new to drones, you should understand that drones are classified by weight. The more weight a drone has, the more damage it can do to a person or you know, an object, a car, a building, or some structure. So because of that, in all the countries around the world, they have weight restrictions on drones. In North America, for the most part, 250 grams is like, ee, that's where we get into restrictions. Anything under 250 grams, mm, less restrictions. So in other words, in my country of Canada, if a drone is under 250 grams, I do not have to go and write an online test and get a certificate to show that I understand how to fly a remotely controlled vehicle. Don't have to do that. I can just buy this and go fly it. In addition, 
there's less restrictions for me in my country of Canada. If I want to fly this over my house, eh, not a big deal because it's under 250 grams. It's just like I went to Walmart, I bought a little $50 drone and I'm buzzing around my backyard. Same, same, same idea. For myself in Canada, for your country, check your regulations. So first plus with this baby is it's under 250 grams. So people in Canada rejoice. This would be a great thing for your business. Let's go on to the next plus. Next plus is sound. This does not make a lot of noise. So when I fly this over my house, or if you and your business are flying this over somebody else's house and someone else, a neighbor is having a barbecue, they're probably not going to hear this drone. A lot of neighbors, a lot of people on the planet think that if a drone is flying, that their lives are so important, they are a Kardashian of some sorts, and they think that if a drone is flying, even if it's a mile away, it must be filming them because their lives are so freaking important. So I know that's insane, but that's just the way things are in the world. Everybody's very private. So the noise from a drone causes people to look even though the drone's not pointing at them, they will think that it's filming them. So you want a drone that's less noisy when you're flying in a neighborhood. This is pretty good. It can pick up satellites in the sky, even if you're in a congested area. So when you saw it fly in the video, you know, I was between a house behind me, a house on the side, my house in the front, trees. It had a little bit of sky to get the satellites and it was able to do it. So that was really good with this. Not all drones can do that. You're gonna see that. In addition, the communication system for this here mini is OcuSync 2.0. You probably don't know what that is unless you're in the drone hobby. It is one of the best communication systems on the market for a camera drone. That means I can fly this little mini up over an object like the house in front of me and go even over it out of view where I can't even see it anymore like because I'm going in the front and I will still retain communication with the drone. It won't go into any like situation where it goes, where are you? I have to come home to you. All of the drones you saw all have 4K video and 4K video is really good. Even if you don't have a 4K computer or anything to watch it on, but on a normal laptop or whatever, when you watch 4K video, that is a super high resolution. So even if you couldn't see something on your phone, you can rewatch it off the micro SD card in the drone, stick it into your laptop, rewatch the video flight sequence, and you will pick up stuff that you might've missed and you can zoom in and look at intricate little things. You saw in the video I tested out each drone to look straight ahead and up above the horizon and look down. This one here had the ability to look above the horizon. In addition, it had the ability to do a zoom. Zoom is something new on a lot of drones coming out. It didn't exist in the past because zoom is usually like just a digital enhancement of the image and it gets a lot of vibrations. So when you do a zoom, you also have to take care of the vibrations, the movement. So a lot of new models of drones have it built in so that when you zoom in, it stabilizes the footage and keeps keeps it nice and smooth, and this one has that. So now let me get into the minuses of the Mini 2. Well, there's only two. One is it has no obstacle avoidance. That means that if I fly too close to the roof or the house, I might crash into the roof or the house, and then it could just flop onto the roof, and then I gotta go up on the roof and get it myself. So no obstacle avoidance. That's the only minus, big minus I can think of. The next one is wind, and I'm talking about gusting wind because a little drone like this with good stability, the wind can be blowing and it will do okay. You will see it in the air, you know, moving around a little bit because of the wind and you'll be able to control it and have no issues. But if there's gusting wind around a house, wind blows around a house, it hits the house, sometimes it gets compressed and it has to shoot over the roof and that causes wind gusts. So you flying up, everything is smooth going up the side of the house and then you get above the roof. Remember, I've done this many times and a wind gust hits it and it just knocks it someplace. Little drones are more susceptible to wind gusts. And final item, let me tell you the price. This drone right now, as of the recording of this video, will cost you around $419 US. You're probably saying, but I only wanted to spend $50. Sorry, if you wanna fly a drone around a house and be responsible, you better have a good drone. $419 US is what you're gonna pay bottom price. Next drones I'm going to show you are higher priced. Let's go on to the next one. All right, the next one is the Paradanafi, and I will tell you the pluses and minuses. I'll put them over here again. So the first plus is obviously the sound. This is the quietest drone on the market today. I don't know of any drone that's more quiet than the Paradanafi, so this here is really good. None of your neighbors are going to complain. Next thing is the camera quality. It is 4K. It's really good camera quality on this thing. This is also the only drone on the market that allows you to look straight up and straight down. 
drone. Now the straight up is really beneficial. I have used this drone so many times when people want to inspect underneath the roof. So I'll fly this drone underneath really close to the house and look straight up. Want to inspect anything. You know, uh, in the enterprise market, in the commercial market, they use this drone a lot for inspecting anything where they have to look up like bridges or communication systems. So it's a really good drone for that. So if that's what you're looking at doing, always looking straight up, flying something under and looking up, then this is the drone you're going to want. It's also the next plus. It also has the best, the best zoom out of any of the drones. This zoom is really, really good for inspecting. And as you saw in the video, I could get really close, even though the drone was far, far away. Really good for that. Now, let me tell you about the minuses with this baby. First minus would be, well, the weight here. Let me just put it down on my little weigh scale here. What's it coming up at? 316 grams. So it's over that 250 grams that I spoke about. Next minus would be the the satellites. This thing here gave me a problem sitting on the ground. I couldn't get satellites when I wanted to take off. So I took off anyways, because as the drone goes up, I'll get more satellites. So it has to get pretty high with no obstructions around it for it to get satellites. That means the stability is really, really put uh, in question. This drone does flop around quite a bit in the air and it is susceptible to wind. So wind gusts, so this drone, I have flown it. I have another video where I was uh, filming people putting my roof in place, like roofers working away. And it was super windy out and I flew the Anafi around them and you could see the drone just moving all over the place. I made sure it didn't hit any trees or anybody else, but the wind really does affect this drone. Next minus would be the radio system used in this drone. So for me to communicate with my radio, the controller you saw and the drone, it's okay, but it's not the best on the market. So if I had neighbors all around me just blasting out Wi-Fi signal, it's gonna affect that communication. It is very susceptible to interference. So you gotta keep that in mind when you're flying in congested areas. Areas. And the last minus is the obstacle avoidance because it has none. So as you're flying it around, uh, you want to keep very, very good control of this drone to make sure that it's not going to get close to anything that's going to cause it to uh, smash into that thing and then land on the roof and you have to go get it. That's why this with the zoom on this, you don't have to get really close to anything. That's what makes this drone really, really good. So finally, I'll tell you the price on it. Now this drone goes on sale a lot because it's not new. It's not a 2020 drone. It came out earlier than that. So I see this on sale an awful lot for $400. $199 US. I don't know if it's on sale today when I'm making this video, but either case, just like the mini and this drone, I will put links below to where I found this drone and you can go check out the links. Let's go on to the next drone. Here we go. Next drone we're going to take a look at is the DJI Mavic Air 2, one of the best drones on the market, one of my favorites. All right, let's go with the pluses and minuses. First thing, this thing incorporates a system that is so good with satellites, it can pick up satellites like anywhere. So not a problem with the satellites and the stability, even in congested areas, it's really, really good. This drone also uses a very good communication system, OcuSync 2.0. So that means from you with your little radio to this drone, you can fly it all over the place, no matter the interference. If you're in an area with really, really bad interference from all sorts of radio signals, you're in a really congested area, urban area, then uh, this here will not have a problem. It will fly. So this makes it a really good drone for such jobs. Camera quality on here, you know, exceptional, just like all the other ones. Check it out on your computer. It's all 4K. This uh, camera can look above the horizon a little bit, just as you saw in the video. So if you're flying up a house and you have to look up a little bit, perfect for that. It also has built-in zoom, as you saw, with stability. So it's really good for that. What makes this drone different than the other two drones I've shown you already is in the front of the drone, you have obstacle avoidance. And in the rear of the drone, you have obstacle avoidance. So when you're facing the house or objects on the roof of the house, the obstacle avoidance is engaged. You can turn it on and off if you wish. That means you will not crash into the house as long as you're facing forward. Not a problem. When you go to the roof, you can fly forward at objects and you will not crash into them because the drone will automatically stop before hitting them. Same as if you're looking at something and you start to fly backwards and you didn't realize there's a big air conditioning unit behind you. The rear obstacle avoidance will stop this drone from hitting it. Very, very good in that regard. Also, you'll notice the drone is a bit larger than the other drones I've shown you. And it does have a bit more weight. I'm gonna show you the weight in a second. It's not bothered that much by wind gusts. So you can fly this around a house when there's some wind happening or gusts happening, and it should work out quite well. 
So now let me tell you the minuses about this drone. There's not that many, so it's a pretty good drone. It is larger, as I mentioned, which means it weighs more. So let me put it down on my scale. And as I flew it, 571 grams is basically what I flew it as. So 571 gram drone. Now with that extra weight means that the props have to spin a little harder to get it up in the air. That means noise. So this drone is noisier than the other two drones I've already showed you. So that's a minus for this one, the noise. It's not super noisy, but it is noisier. Your neighbors will hear you flying this one. And the last minus would be the obstacle avoidance. Certainly it has forward obstacle avoidance, it has rear obstacle avoidance, and it actually has bottom obstacle avoidance. But it doesn't have top obstacle avoidance and it doesn't have side obstacle avoidance. So as you saw in the video, in some of the drones I was flying, I was going along my gutters, you know, side to side. There was a chimney on one side and I could have smashed into it if I didn't know it was there, you know, but that's why you have to have visual line of sight with your drone at all time. So that's, that's a minus. But other than that, everything is a plus with this drone. Really good. Now you're probably wondering, hey, I like that one because it's got obstacle avoidance. What's the price on it? It is pricey because it is a, it's getting into the more consumer pro area of drones. So this one, I have to look at my price. This one right now on the DJI store is $799 US. Yes, $799 US is what you'll pay for this. But if you have a business, it's an awesome investment. So uh, links are below. Check it out. Next up is the Skydio 2. Now the Skydio 2 is one of my favorite drones for specific type of functions. I do use it to look at people's roofs every now and then because it's got a cool feature that I really like. If I don't really know the roof, this is the one I like to use and I'll explain why in this little thing. So let me show you the pluses and minuses. First off, the camera quality. Really good on the Skydio 2. You know, it's as good as all the other ones. I, I can't really say one is better than the other in 4K because 4K is 4K with the sense and the amount of pixels. They, for roofing, they're all pretty much the same because you're close to an object. This one also has a very nice above horizon. The camera, you saw me, I could raise up the camera quite high above horizon, which is really good on a drone. So even though it can't look straight up like the Parada Nafi, it still can look up quite a bit. The biggest plus on this one would be the 360 obstacle avoidance. There is a camera on each arm on this thing and that camera is designed to not crash into anything. You cannot crash this drone. It's very hard, especially in roofing. So when you fly it up and you fly it and you look at something on the roof, you can look as close as you want um, because it won't crash into it. Just fly straight at it and the drone would automatically move itself around or above the object. So you don't have to go left or right or up or down. Just go straight at the object. This here will go over the object or around the object as it sees fit. And you can control it that way. So that's why I use this drone a lot of times on roofs I'm not familiar with. I don't know what's on top of the roof. I can't see it from the street. Then I'll use something like this because then I know I'm not going to bang into something on the side or the back just from making uh, silly navigation. Obviously with a lot of these drones, if you've never done a roof inspection before and you're not familiar with the roof, you fly the drone up and you go way above the roof and you look down and you survey it yourself so you know it's there. Then you come down and look at the roof. All right. What's another plus on this? Well, it's wind. This drone, with all those obstacle avoidance sensors, it gets moved around. It's very heavy, but it gets moved around by gusts of wind. It's just, it's just the way this drone is, but it can never crash into anything. It doesn't matter if the wind wants to push it at an object to crash into. It is so smart that it will pull away before it even crashes into anything. So that's why I say this is really good in the wind. Let me tell you the minuses. First minus obviously is the weight. Let me show you the weight of this drone as I flew it. So let me just put it down here. What do we have? 777 grams. That would make it the heaviest drone that was flown in this test. That's a lot of weight. And a lot of weight, as I say, can damage a person or your uh, a house that's surrounding the area which you're filming, uh, surveying, or anything. So that's why weight is a bit of an issue. And this one's kind of heavy. So you really have to be careful with a heavy drone. Thank God it's got 360 obstacle avoidance. Another minus with that weight is the sound. It's a little noisy. This drone is similar to the Anafi. When I put it on the ground for takeoff, it could not get sufficient satellites, but it doesn't care. This drone does not care. It says, I don't care if I can't get satellites for flying.
line because with the 360 obstacle avoidance, it uses that. So you can take off if you can't even get satellites, it doesn't matter. So it takes off and it just keeps on looking around and making sure it's not gonna crash into you or anything else around. So that's why it could fly. Even though it wasn't getting all the satellites, it had no issue. This drone has a communication system that is almost identical to the Peridonafi, so it's really subjected to interference. Yes, if you have a lot of interference around, this drone will get interference, but once again, it has that 360 obstacle avoidance, so you're not gonna crash it, even if you lose you know, communication with it. And the final minus with this drone would just be that it does not have zoom like the other ones. However, if you have money in your pocket, you can equip this here drone with zoom and probably the best zoom on the market. So if you wanna buy the software for the enterprise edition of the Skydio 2, you can. You just contact Skydio 2 and you can buy that software. I don't know the cost for it, but I'm sure it's kind of expensive. It's made for commercial industry and it has a 360 super zoom. So basically all of these cameras that are on each arm for obstacle avoidance become cameras for the zoom. And since they're all grabbing like a 4K image, in the super zoom you have all of that data that you can zoom in onto anything as you are flying. You don't do it in so much in real time. From what I understand, you do it afterwards on the software on your laptop or computer. When you're re-looking at all the footage, you can just look at something and say, I want to zoom in to that part on the roof and you can. So finally, you're wondering, what's the price on this baby? Well, it starts at $999 US. And for $999 US, you could use it to inspect roofs, but you need it's better to have the little controller that you saw me using in the hand. That's extra. So it's going to take you over a thousand. The reason I'm including this and saying that the drone is under a thousand is because it's 999 US and you can fly it with just your phone if you wish and inspect the roof. It will do it because it's not going to crash into anything, but it's better if you have the controller to control it even better to do that sort of thing. So these are the drones I recommend. If you're wondering about something more expensive like the DJI Mavic 2 Pro or Mavic 2 Zoom or the Autel Evo 8K or 6K, certainly you could use those, but I do not recommend them because they are too much of an investment. And if something goes wrong on that roof and you damage that drone, that's a big investment gone. These, to me personally, anything that's a thousand bucks or less is something, if I'm doing this continuously, is something I can invest in and I can write off. It's not, if it's a business, it's not a big investment. So if something goes wrong, I, I haven't lost a lot of money by one of these drones, vice something that's over a thousand. And the same is true with the little budget drones that I haven't shown in this video. Never use those to inspect a roof. You will lose the drone or you will crash into somebody's house. They do not have good communication systems. They're budget drones. They're not really designed for anything like that. Those are more fun drones in the budget line. So stick with, you know, the more pro drones if you're making money off this sort of thing. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumb up if you have any questions on the four drones i showed then uh, post your comments below and i will get back to you all right guys thanks for watching catch you in the next video bye